The future is now for Cam Harper and his employee, Kate Harper. They are setting up command on this farm in Franklin Parish. Batteries charging, tanks filling, fields mapped. Waypoint added. It's time to take flight. It's a precise piece of equipment. These drones are the newest tools for farmers to use to apply herbicides, pesticides, and more. Today, they're treating a field that's too wet for a tractor. It's been wet when it shouldn't have been for farmers who are trying to get in their fields and spray. That takes the tractor and the high boy out. It's either a plane or, or now a drone that, that can do it. Harper says this has been the story since he started the business five months ago. Though his aerial approach is not new, Harper believes it does have a place in the market. The air tractor has been a vital part of uh, farming agriculture, especially in our area, uh, for years and years and years. And it's not going to go anywhere. Uh, the air tractor has its place uh, here just like the drone has its place in certain niches. Uh, maybe you're like this farmer who, who farms next to a break with tree lines all around it, three houses and power lines. Uh, I feel like I'm better suited here than an airplane would. It's going to be a precise application. It's going to be mindful of the homeowners around it, and it's going to protect uh, not only the farmer, but people that are around the application. And those neighbors are excited about it. That's what Harper heard directly from Wayne Lowe, a neighbor to a field that he was leaving. This looks like it is almost pinpoint actually like laser controlled. Lowe says he's lost fruit trees and winter vegetables over the years, and he's excited for the more precise option farmers have. I'm tickled to think of the improvement of control around people's houses with the chemical and burn down they put out. And it would be great for putting out fertilizer around people's houses. That precision is the selling point, but Harper was slow to take credit for that. The farmer's got certain requirements that he wants for his application. I input those into the system. I map the field out tell the drone how much to spray, what to spray. Once it uploads to the drone, it knows that and it pretty much does it. There's very little interaction with me controlling the drone after that. There is a trade-off with these drones. Speed. These are moving about 15 feet off the ground and about 12 miles an hour. These two drones can cover about 200 acres a day. You know, that's less than what a tractor's gonna get. That's much less than what an airplane's gonna get. Uh, but I believe you're paying for a different product and, and a specialty product. Harper told me that he does have plans to also do some work in the residential space, spraying lawns for things like stickers or mosquitoes or aquatic weeds in your backyard pond, and even more. To learn about Macon Ridge Specialty Drone Services, head over to our website at twilatv.org. And Avery, mm -hmm. I've been a big fan of my cute little drone. I feel like it's a cute little drone after seeing these guys. I need to uh, stop you there because not only is he a big fan, he is a drone nerd. I love them. I think they're the coolest thing ever. People ask me about all the camera toys that we get to play with doing mm -hmm. this job. And That's uh, your favorite. Toys. Uh, toys is a strong term. It's a tool. They're it's a tools. tool. But this looks like a toy. This, this guy, not a toy. Yeah, the, that thing is huge, and it just blew my mind. I thought I knew everything about drones. Not everything. I don't know everything about drones. But I thought I had a pretty good grasp of drones, but that is a game changer. And just seeing mm -hmm. them work in the field, it was just mind-blowing. Uh, just how efficient they are, mm -hmm. how I mean, they, they fly 15 feet off the ground, and the application is really solid. It goes around light poles and just... It, so, it's all the cool things I've seen in this, except in the middle of a, uh, a field in... Franklin Parish, and it's like, the future is here. For a moment, for a moment, Carl, did you consider a career change? I, I, <laughs> I did. I did. I was like, Cam, do you need any workers in South Louisiana? But I, I did see, I, I know there are other farmers that are already mm -hmm. picking this up, and he's talking about working with farmers to, to one, get them to drones, uh, and he's a provider now mm -hmm. for DJI on the ag side, but two, to help service farmers. And like, hey, I've walked through this. I know the, the headaches you're going to run into on your farm, getting all this stuff uh, calibrated and stuff. So he's kind of, he's trying to partner with farmers to put these tools in their hands also. So it's really cool. So he may not need me to help him here in South Louisiana, but it was, it was very tempting because it's just, the technology is just so cool to see it in the field. And I was like, man, I could, I could see myself doing this because it's, well, it's fun. It's definitely an interesting growing side of technology. Thank you very much, Carl Wiggers.